Alright, so let's look at this question here. It says, uh, sodium lamp emits some amount of radiant energy. Let me just start by labeling them. Some power of radiant energy. And as a reminder, power is some change of energy per unit time. Most of which has a wavelength of about, okay, we are given the wavelength. Estimate the number of photons emitted at uh, per second. So we can say my delta T is equal to one second. So we'll simplify some things by the lamp. Okay, um, so because we are talking about energy of light, at some point we are going to need to use the fact that energy of, oh, not the color I wanted. Uh, at some point we have to use the fact that energy of a photon is given by, energy of a single photon is given by Planck's constant times frequency. Now, we are given the frequency directly. We are given the wavelength. But given wavelength, and uh, you can relate it to frequency through this familiar wave relationship. The speed of wave is the frequency times wavelength. So solving it for frequency, you have speed of light divided by lambda. So plugging that in here, you get Planck's constant times c divided by the wavelength. That's the energy of a single photon. So what you need to do to get the number of photons is to work through this logic. So you know how much energy is being emitted by the lamp in one second, 4.5 joules in one second. And you know how much energy a single photon has. So if you, count, if you want the number of photons, the way you can count to them without counting one by one, is the amount of energy divided by energy per photon. Then what you end up with will be the per photon part flipped over number of photons. So, oh, so the one challenge is um, I have to convert from the uh, electron volt unit to the, the SI unit because what is a SI unit of power? So, so let me do the conversion in place. So um, for the, uh, let me just have a symbol for energy of photon. So for energy of photon, um, what you are saying is that's a plus constant times speed of light, or I need a symbol for speed of light, divided by wavelength. Speed of light divided by wavelength. Okay. And when you look at the energy of the photon, the problem would be you have H in the electron volt unit. So you have um, H is equal to 4.136 electron volt times second. Now, you can convert from electron volt to, to joule unit, uh, at basic SI unit, pretty easily by remembering that elementary charge is equal to 1.6, I think O2 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. So if you have that number memorized, then uh, did I memorize it right? Uh, let, let me just look it up to be sure. Elementary charge, uh, 1.6 O2, yeah, I have it memorized. <laughs> um, then Coulomb times volt is a joule from uh, physics 4b. So to convert from the electron volt unit to joule unit, really all you need to do is plug in this quantity here. That amounts to, uh, wait, sorry, I forgot a power here, uh, 4.136 times 10 to the power of minus 15. So if we just take this quantity, multiply it by, so e photon times, 1.602 times 10 to the power of minus 19, then that will convert your Planck's constant into basic SI unit. So uh, that gives me the energy of the photon in the basic SI unit. And what I need to do is take 4.5 joule, number given here, and divide by this. So that's it. Uh, let me just plug in the numbers here. I need wavelength of... Um, 589 nanometers, so 589 times 10 to the power of minus 9 meters in basic SI units. C is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, basic SI units. So 
that seems like a pretty high number. That's probably correct. 1.333 times uh, times 10 to the power of 19. Photons are emitted. Yeah, probably right. Yeah, good. Um, let's look at the next question. So this is a photoelectric effect question. It says the work function of a photoelectric surface is given by this. What is the maximum speed of the, okay, uh, some V max uh, when some wavelength of light falls on it? Okay, let's just refresh uh, what we understand about photoelectric effect. So if we have some uh, metals, sorry, I can't draw metal surfaces. If you have some metal surface, imagine light being incident on this surface. It comes in with some wavelength, which is related to the frequency. And in this photoelectric effect, some electron gets popped out with some amount of kinetic energy. And Einstein's bold assumption was to say, we can treat this for uh, electromagnetic radiation interacting with the metal surface like it's a particle with the amount of energy given by Planck's constant times its frequency, frequency of the wave. And um, in analyzing this interaction, what Einstein would say is, okay, you have some amount of incoming energy that goes into two things. One, potential energy, freeing up the electron from this work function, plus whatever's left over goes into kinetic energy. So that's the relationship. Um, so they're asking for the maximum speed, which can be related to maximum kinetic energy. Um, yeah, and that would be associated with whatever electrons were closest to the surface so that the amount of energy needed to free them was exactly the work function. So let me solve it for the maximum kinetic energy. Maximum kinetic energy is very simple algebra. Uh, the energy of the photon minus the work function. And from the given information, we can work out the energy of the photon pretty quickly. So the other relationship you need to finish answering this question is your kinetic energy expressed in terms of uh, speed of the particles. So uh, for the electrons is the important part. <laughs> so the kinetic energy in rel non-relativistic regime should be one half mv squared. So speed of each particle should be square root of uh, two divided by m times kinetic energy. I think that's right. Oh, I gotta look up um, electron mass. Um, do I have it memorized? I don't think I have it memorized. Um, I don't have it memorized. I have a feeling it might be something like 9 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram. But I'm not super confident. So let me look it up. Um, I'll look. Mass. Uh, all right, it was close, but probably far enough that I'll have gotten it dinged. It's a 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Yeah. If we had been in electron volt units, I would have remembered 0 0.511 mega electron volt per C squared. But um, I think uh, the trouble of doing the unit conversions is probably not worth it. Um, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I'm just gonna leave it here. Or let me give it some thought. Let me do it two different ways. So if I'm using mass in the basic SI unit, then I have to kind of be careful to express my maximum kinetic energy in basic SI unit, which means I once I've calculated this number, I need to convert that into basic SI unit. So let me do that first. I'm going to take the energy of my photon, which should be Planck's constant times the frequency. And we've said this before, that um, the frequency and wavelength can be related by wave speed is the wavelength times frequency. So frequency is wavelength, uh, wave speed divided by wavelength. 
So I have uh, Planck's constant times C divided by lambda. I think I have all those symbols, yeah. Um, that's the energy of the photon. Subtract of the work function. That will give you the maximum kinetic energy. And I can plug in all these numbers now. So the numbers plugging it in, speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Wavelength is uh, 440 times 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. And work function is uh, 1.9 electron volt. And the number we have here is in electron volt. So if I want to use this uh, mass of the electron, I need to convert this into basic SI unit. And you do that by multiplying it by its elementary charge in SI unit, 1.602 times 10 to the power of my Nine, minus 19 joules, uh, joules I'm sorry, minus 19 coulomb for a single electron. So that will give you energy of the photon in basic SI unit. That's my, uh, uh, sorry, not energy of the photon, sorry. It will give me this uh, difference in basic SI unit, which is going to the possible maximum kinetic energy of electron. And then uh, to get the maximum speed, I multiply by 2 divided by the mass and then take the square root. So square root of 2 times previous calculation divided by math, 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So I get a speed of, wow, that's pretty high. Um, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5.69 times 10 to the power of let me count it again. One, two, three, four, five, five. Oh, uh, that seems, yeah, pretty high and correct. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's uh, one way to do it. And uh, I guess that's probably the conceptually the simplest way to do it. Let me give you an alternate way of doing this, um, doing this uh, calculation. Because when you are doing uh, this calculation, so let me see if I can plug in the mass of the electron in terms of um, in, in terms of this quantity here, you know, mass of electron. So this is the commonly used value in particle physics, 0 0.511 mega electron volt per c squared. So when you imagine plugging in this number for the mass of the electron, then this is what you have. Speed is equal to square root of 2 divided by 0 0.511, let's say times 10 to the 6 electron volt per c squared times the kinetic energy, which will be some number um, in electron volts. When you consider this, look at this wonderful thing. Electron volt units, they cancel out. So really, all you have to do is carefully plug in the numbers into this expression here. You get this expression. Your speed is equal to, let me simplify some of the nested fractions. So it's going to be square root of 2 times whatever kinetic energy you calculated uh, in electron volt units uh, divided by this number here, 0 0.511 times 10 to the power of 6. Um, numbers. And then this is divided by c squared, it goes on the numerator. So times c squared. And all the quantities up to here, I believe units have cancelled out. Electron volt units cancelled out. So this whole combination is unitless. It's just a ratio. And so I have meter squared per second squared. When I take square root, yeah, that gives me unit of velocity. So I can just plug in numbers this way. So I calculated the kinetic energy in electron volt units up, uh, up here without this. That's the kinetic energy in electron volt units. So what I can do is I can take that answer, multiply 2 to it, and then divide it by 0 0.511 times 10 to the power of 6, and then take this entire quantity times the C, uh, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 squared. All of that square rooted. That should give me the speed of the, uh, 
photoelectron as it's being emitted from the surface. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, um, there's it's some rounding error stuff, but it's the same answer within three significant figures when I put it 5.69 times 10 to the power of 5. Uh, and if I put in more digits, it's within the uh, tolerance, so you won't say it's wrong. Yeah. So, um, so once you get used to electron volt units and how things like masses are expressed that way, you can actually get a lot of work done without ever leaving the electron volt unit. So, um, yeah. So that was the I think the last question. Ten dash two. Yeah. 